What's the number one mistake people make when they uh, gamble in Vegas? Well, uh, there's a lot of a lot of misconception about winning and losing in Las Vegas. Now, it's true by statistics that almost 86% of all visitors to Las Vegas actually win on slots, blackjack, craps, or any game. The biggest mistake that people make is getting lost sight of their budget. And what they do is when they win, they spend it back and they lose it. Then they then they get more money. So the trick to winning consistently, even on a vacation, is to realize that when you are winning something, it is a win, so take it, put it away, and budget for it for another day. Now, wait a second. You said that 86% of visitors to Las Vegas win? That's right. 86% of all people who come to Las Vegas to gamble are actually winners. But are you talking about net winners or just they won sometime during their trip? They won sometime during their trip. Oh, the wait a second. So they're not <laughs> net winners. No, because the casinos could not be building $3 billion resorts if uh, everybody walked away with the money. And that's the point, because this is an entertainment destination. It's not just a gambling destination. Las Vegas is an entertainment destination. There are wonderful restaurants in Las Vegas. There are great shows to see. There's Lake Mead. There's lots of uh, outside activities as well. All right, let's so go back to these statistics. If 86 Six percent of gamblers at some point are ahead. What percentage of gamblers at the end of their trip or at the end of their sessions or whatever uh, are actually net winners? Less than one percent. Less than one percent. Less than one percent. So that's the real number that we're talking that's about. That's the real number of the reality. There's another reality that you might like to know. Uh, there is a survey being conducted by the Las Vegas Conventions and Visitors Authority called the LVCVA, which is an annual survey. And it gives an example of approximately how much of an average budget a visitor to Las Vegas will have. It's somewhere around $500 in the last uh, year that they did the interview. Does that include gambling? That That is the budget for gaming, yes, that okay. they have with them. Now, this particular budget uh, does actually reflect the reality because when you go and talk to the people what they tell you is that that's the money that they bring with them for that purpose but uh, it turns out that most of the time they lose it the first few hours they're here and then they go and get more money so the actual average based upon my own research is about three thousand six hundred dollars per visitor thirty six hundred dollars per visitor that's a married correct. couple do you double it well, no, that's uh, if, if they have a budget together as a married couple or friends that come together with it, that's the money that they together would spend for that. But it's based on an average particular uh, gambling group, say. So you're saying it's a $3,100 lie uh, per, per, per uh, gambling budget? No, it's not a lie. It's absolutely the truth because... No, no, the, I'm saying they say they, their budget is 500 but they really go through 3600 So that's a that's a $3,100 lie. Well, the point is that the people that are being interviewed for this are being interviewed while they are either arriving or on the Las Vegas Strip, and they are asked a specific question. And the question is, how much money did you bring with you for the purpose of gaming? And the average turned out to be somewhere around $500. Now, that is the truth as far as the person sees it at that particular moment. But it is not the reality at the end of the visit. You just wrote a new book about slots. Tell That's me correct. about it, and do you have any tips in there to help us not lose so much? It is, a, it is a new book called New Casino Slots. And the reason why it is called New Casino Slots because the advances in computer technology have created an entire new field of opportunities for manufacturers to create multi-purpose and multi-gaming environments similar to what the young players might find on the internet. These are games that are very sophisticated. They have multi-tier bonuses. They have many different lines, 50 lines, 100 lines. And I was fortunate enough to get permission from Aristocrat Technologies that makes some of the greatest games in uh, in the world to uh, write some of the secrets about their games and about the various bonuses and tiers that they have and I put them all in that particular new book called New Casino Slots. Okay, I don't want you to give away the whole book, but give us one secret. Uh, one secret is that if you are want if you want to be a consistent winner, play all of the available lines and play at least one credit on each and every line. So that means that if the lines are one penny per line and there are 50 lines, play all 50 lines for one penny a line, that's 50 cents per bet. What most people don't do is that they don't take advantage of all the available options. And the secret is that on many machines, if you don't play the maximum lines with at least one credit bet on all of the lines, you are not getting the best available payback percentage of which that device is capable. You know, penny slots had a big explosion, a big, big surge in popularity over the last five years. But the statistics I've seen show that penny slots have the worst payback or the biggest hold for the casinos. In other words, they make more money off of penny slots than 
nickels, dimes, quarters, dollars, five dollars, true? Oh, absolutely. And that's because the penny slots, per se, are no longer penny slots. Uh, if, you are, uh, if you have a machine where the maximum bet is 200, that's two dollars. So that's a two dollar game. 500 crates, that's five dollars. So you're playing a five dollar slot machine, not a penny slot machine. But they're all in the penny slot section. You mean the, 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 they're tricking us? Uh, it's not so much that they are tricking you. What the point is, is that it is a one penny denomination, which means that if you want, you can play one line for one cent. But that, is, that means that you are not taking advantage of what the device is capable of providing. Now, one of the misconceptions is that penny slots are notoriously bad payers. That is not the case. Many of the newest penny slots actually have paybacks in excess of 99.97% which is better than just about every table game there is. That is a big misconception. However, the proviso to that is, is that most of them are what's called top heavy, which means that the majority of the payback is vested in the top two or three jackpots. So in other words, two or three people will win big and 45 million people will lose. Well, all you have to do is look at the California lottery. How many people play? How much money is being spent in there? And what are the odds? One person walks away with $200 million, and 200 million people walk away with nothing. However, Las Vegas gives you the opportunity, and slot machines give you the opportunity to actually manage your own money. It is all in your control. You can select the denomination, you can select the number of lines to play, and you can select the budget that you want to spend. And you can select when to pick yourself up and leave. And you can select when to pick yourself up off the floor after you have lost all your money and go to the cage and get some more. <laughs> That's not what's fair. Listen, ATM fees in Las Vegas, all over the place. Um, I've seen ATM fees ranging from $3 up to uh, $6 per transaction. If you're only taking out 40 or $50 at a time, that's a huge percentage. Of course, and that's why the, uh, the point of uh, the machine is if you are going to take out any money using the ATM, then take out as much as you are have available. Take out $500, $1,000, or whatever it is that your maximum is. If you want to take out a smaller amount like that, make an arrangement with the casino cage to cash a personal check. The situation is very easily done. There is a, a credit bureau in Las Vegas called uh, Casino Credit, and they will cash a check up to $500 for anybody. So you don't have to go to the ATM to get $40. Go to the cage and ask them, and it'll cost you nothing. Okay, also, um, if you're a guest in the hotel, they also cash uh, checks for their guests. Oh, that's correct, especially if you are a guest at that particular property and you have a Players Club card. It's very important for you to get a Players Club card because it identifies you as a player at that property. And that you will get the best treatment possible. And when you do have needs such as casino credit or to cash a personal check, that identifies you as somebody that is at the property. They will look at you more favorably. And, uh, of course, they will also know where to find you. Give us a rundown of what's in your book. Uh, my new book, uh, New Casino Slot, uh, includes a profile of the language of casino slots. It shows you what all the terminology means, what is multi-line, what is payback, what is power pay, what is bonus pay, and so forth. It shows you actual photographs of the machines themselves, the game screens that you will find, the tiered bonuses and how to get them, and how much you have to spend in order to be able to actually unlock all of those bonuses that are available for you to get. So in other words, it's a how-to guide of how to play the machines instead of looking at all these screens with all these symbols and not having a clue as to what's a winner. Absolutely. The best way to describe my book is that after reading it, you will learn how to play those machines without having to use your own money in the casino to find out. Okay. How do we get the book? Uh, the book is available at Amazon.com, at BarnesandNoble.com, and all major bookstores everywhere, including in Las Vegas from the Gambler's Bookshop. Okay, again, the name of the book is? New Casino Slots, and you can find out more about it at my website at www.gamingauthor.com. Gamingauthor.com. That is correct. Okay, uh, any more tips you've got for us? Um, as far as um, entertaining in, uh, entertainment in Las Vegas is concerned, one of the things that I would like to tell you is that when you are in Las Vegas, take advantage of all that the city has to offer because it is an opportunity unlike any other. This is truly a multi-purpose destination which is concerned not only with just gaming but also with other activities. And one of the things that you should definitely take advantage of is to go and walk through all the properties, take a look at the beautiful properties that have been created, uh, enjoy the restaurants, the shows, the facilities, and always remember the casino is there 24-7. So you don't have to, you can give up that seat, it'll still be there when you want to come back. That's correct. So <laughs> one of the things that I say is there's always an open seat in Las Vegas. <laughs> is that right? Okay. Um, 
Any other tip about making reservations, getting hotels, booking your trip, the best time to come to Las Vegas? Well, I would say that if you like to book a trip and get some, um, get some additional uh, bonuses and discounts, go to accessvegas.com, which is a very good site for you to find out about hotels and restaurants in Las Vegas. And uh, the best time to come is uh, Tuesday through Thursday, because that's when you get the best rates, because not many people are visiting during midweek. Are there some seasons when, when rates are lower? I, I heard the summer is a great time to come, because the convention business is down. That's correct. Uh, when the conventions are, the streets get uh, fairly congested, uh, taxi cabs, are usually at the convention center. Summertime, it tends to be hot, especially for people from the Midwest and East Coast who are not used to temperatures over 100 degrees. So certainly, summertime is a good time to come. But also, curiously, is during the middle of winter. When it does get cold in Las Vegas in December, January, and February, uh, most people tend to stay away. But you have to remember that the properties are multi-purpose. They're very well air-conditioned and heated. And all the facilities are still available here at very deep discounts, especially after the holiday seasons. Uh, so you can get deals in, in winter. Uh, can you come here for the holidays? Are, are, are rates even better than around the holidays? Thanksgiving, Christmas? Uh, those rates are very good too. One of the one of the misconceptions is that everybody jacks up the rates just because it's a Thanksgiving holiday or it's a it's a Christmas or uh, or a New Year's. Yes, it's true that traditionally those rates tend to be higher, but one also has to take into account the market conditions that we now have currently in the United States and elsewhere in the world. The casino properties would like to have their rooms filled. Currently, they're enjoying about an 86 percent occupancy rate, when normally they used to 96 or more. So there are deals to be had, and some of the older properties, especially in downtown Las Vegas or on the North Las Vegas Strip, you might find that uh, even at the peak times, you can get a room rate for under $100 a night. Do you have a casino with the best odds for the player? Do you, do you, do you have one in particular that you can mention? There, there are many properties in Las Vegas. I would hate to single one out that... Uh, that have the best payback. One of the one of the great properties, of course, is Caesar's Palace and uh, the Flamingo behind us, as well as Bally's in Paris. If you go off the strip, uh, casinos such as the Palms, for example, which is just up the road here from the Flamingo on Flamingo Road, has very very good paybacks on their machines and very good table games as well. Uh, the same is true also of Coast Casinos, South Point, M Resort, further down on the Las Vegas Boulevard South, and some of the newest properties, especially also in downtown, where you might find very good deals at Binion's, the Golden Nugget, or uh, Four Queens, as well as Fitzgerald's. It is more of the older type Las Vegas. Or if you want the newest experience, of course, City Center with the Aria Casino is a place that you must visit. And MGM and, uh, and uh, New York, New York, and uh, the Tropicana, which is now being rebuilt, are also excellent properties for you to visit and get some bigger bang for the buck that you might expect. One last question. How are the slots at the airport? Um, if I was going to give you one advice is uh, leave the money in the wallet and spend it when you get to Las Vegas. Uh, the uh, machines at the airport are notoriously bad. I'm not saying that they are because some people have hit very big jackpots. I saw a man win uh, a uh, Wheel of Fortune jackpot in excess of a million dollars at the airport. It can happen. So if you have small change that you want to spend at the airport, by all means, experience that. Because one of the things is when I first arrived in Las Vegas, I looked at the airport and I saw slot machines and I thought that was heaven. But uh, if I was going to give you some serious advice, is save your money.